Well, you know, some t you'll know. It'll mm -hmm. come to you and you'll know. Happen. Now, you guys have three uh, CDs already. Yes, we do. Mill Avenue Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Spitting Into the Wind. And Perennials. Perennials. Yeah. You know which one's my favorite? Spitting Into the Wind. Spitting in the Wind. That's the best one. I also really like Mill Avenue Cowboys. I do, too. A lot. I like several songs after that. It's where it all began. It's where it all began. Tempe. That's our yeah. common link, all of us. No, none of us live in Tempe. I know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I wish you did, though, instead of where you live. I get a little scared being there. It's close to the edge of town, though, so it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, so you two, Andy, Andy's going to help me. We're making this bechamel sauce. It's coming along super nice. It's getting nice and thick, stirring constantly. We're going to use this, and I know this sounds kind of weird. A lot of my recipes are my grandma's. I do a lot of uh, homemade cooking. But there's a lot of things that you can use that are like, okay, I think are okay cheating things. My grandma did not start making this until I was probably in junior high or high school. Horseshoes, as I said, regional thing out of Springfield from the 1920s, cheese sauce. Use the base smell to make cheese sauce. She would always put a can or jar of cheese whiz in it for the cheese. And I know that doesn't sound like real super authentic, but it's perfect because it has the seasonings in it that most restaurants would use. You're going to have Worcestershire, mustard, different things like that. And the cheese sauce already has it in there and it melts so nice. This is really nice and thick and I'm going to go ahead and turn it down. And Andy is going to come over Ready and do the go. French fries on the fryer for me over there and make some toast. The sandwich is going to be a piece of toast. Most people have put ham on it as the meat. Then you put this lovely cheese sauce all over the whole thing and then dump french fries on it. And then Emmett needs to come over here. Yeah, you better come and take care of this sauce and I'll tell you, I got it. It's smooth. What do you think we should do with the band leader over here? Just leave I'm just going to. Yeah, we're going to leave him there the for witty, witty comments that he makes. I'm a little lonely already. Yeah, you'll be okay. You like that. I do, actually. Yeah, write a song about it. Right now? <laughs> okay, I yes, right now. I got one. Constant Keep stirring that. Oh, sorry, constant attention. Okay. I have it turned down nice and low. Okay, the cheese whiz. It's the easiest for the cheese sauce if you've placed it in a bowl that has some warm water in it. Of course, ooh, I can't get this. Man help. All right, you gotta I know. This Let's over. switch. Constant attention. Constant attention. Look at that. Yeah. Right. I put the perfect trade person on. Trade back. This makes it nice and easy to scoop in there. We just want to stir this now. We've got it nice and low. We're going to stir it in there just to incorporate it, get it all worked through the sauce. When does the Bushmills come out for part of the Bushmills sauce? I, that, I don't make that. You'll have to oh. bring me that recipe. Okay. I have Andy's grandmother's cookie recipe that we're going to making, be making sometime soon. Hey, shouldn't that uh, long-haired guy have a hair net on? Yeah, come on. Maybe what on are you, the health department? <laughs> yeah. We're in an undisclosed kitchen. Maybe oh, fries. On the, on the beard, That's too. That's right. Let's get the fries going. Again, okay, fries are something that you can cheat on. Who really expects for you to make homemade, cut them, and soak them, and do all that? So we have just frozen french fries that Andy's going to pop in. Crinkles are the best because it gives you a nice bunch of potato to have with the cheese sauce. and too thin, they kind of get lost with the, the bread and the sandwich, so you want to kind of have them thick crinkle cuts. Three, if you don't have a neat fryer like I've got over here in my kitchen, um, you can do them in the oven. They're fine, um, but frying is, is glorious. Stuff that's fried is really good. And I know I seem spoiled that I have this neat thing, but I used to own uh, a franchise restaurant, and we had deep fat fryers, big vats, and once you have that, you kind of get spoiled. Frying in the house stinks and all that. If you want to do them in the oven, french fries are fine that way, but we're going to do fried french fries. Andy really likes working the fryer. How's the cheese sauce That's going? Great. Good. We've got it turned perfect. down nice and low. Okay, okay I want you to scoot over a little bit. We're going, to, we're going to go over here. We're going to wait. And Andy's going to make toast and he's going to make french fries, and we're almost ready with all the stuff that we're going to have for dinner. But I'm going to make some desserts and what I went ahead and did was I made an angel food cake and I made cupcakes, two different flavors. Cake mixes, store bought cake mixes. Betty Crocker is wonderful. I mean, you don't even have to know how to read to make a cake because they show you pictures on the box. There's no shame in using any of those. To me, the, the real thing that happens is when you put that frosting in a can on a wonderful cake you've made, I don't understand why anybody would buy those. So you should make your own frosting. And it's super easy. If you get a, a thing of 
can you know, pure C&H uh, powdered sugar. This is a big four pound bag from Costco. I love Costco. I get as much stuff as I can from there. They only have these at the holidays, but you'll really go through a lot of these. Other bags are about two pounds and you like to use them, but the recipe is right on the back, right on the back of the bag. And the only thing that goes in it is powdered sugar, milk, a little bit of salt, and butter. I mean, it's all really easy things that you've got. So you put that in and make it, and, and that's what makes the difference. That's what makes buying, you know, having a cake mix and all that. I've already put my two pounds of, of sugar in here, and I'm going to go ahead and put, as the package says, it's, it would be a third and one and a third cups of butter. I'm making a double batch because I really like frosting, and uh, you can always find somebody who loves a little tub of frosting. I have a couple of friends that when I make treats for, um, I find that I use a lot of frosting on them. I, I think cupcakes are kind of like a vehicle to get frosting in my mouth, and I like that. So I, I put quite a bit of frosting on cupcakes. Homemade frosting is really good, too. People who say they don't like frosting, they like it. Got that in there. Salt. A little bit of salt, like the recipe said. Melissa, when you say lots of frosting, you mean equal parts frosting to cake. Yeah. I, I, which is unusual. Well, I think about those big cupcakes from places. They're really neat. They look so pretty, the great big huge ones, but you can't get it in your mouth and get a bite of cake and frosting without looking like a horse. And you know, So I like to make little ones, and we'll show them when we get done. And not overflowing the cup when you fill it up. And using a scoop when you make cupcakes is really important. If you want them to look professional, use something that is um, a measured device so that everything is the same size. That ensures that they bake at the same rate as well. It's not just about, ooh, they've got to be the same size. Let's go ahead and turn your burner off. Okay. They got to be the same size. It's really not about that. I mean, it's, it's about, baking is science. And so if you have everything the same size, it's all going to bake at the same temperature, so. I'm just glad it's not math. Oh, it's the math too, and that's hard because I'm not good with math. I'm doing a, a double scoop of this in here because, again, I'm doing a double recipe. So it's a, a quarter of a teaspoon for one pound, a half a teaspoon. You got fries going, Andy? Got good. Got fries going. Toast is halfway done. And milk, it should be a half a cup of milk, but it kind of depends. You want to, as you make more frosting, you'll get more attuned to how much you need when it gets thick. Chocolate frosting is really easy to do this way as well. Oh, vanilla. That's the other thing. I'm going to do two little teaspoons of vanilla. It's a shame if you don't make frosting, if you buy it in a can, because this really doesn't take any time. I'm not going to put all the milk in. Reserve it. I'm sorry, it's going to be loud for a couple minutes. My Ooh! Turn that down. Also, I think part of it is that people don't want to clean up. You know, they'll make something like frosting, but then they have to clean up. A lot of people don't have a mixer like this, but you can use a hand mixer to do it. Um, it's not that bad. They don't like to clean up. I'm, I'm the voice of the cook. lazy man. What you have to do is find somebody, if you're willing to cook, that's willing to clean up after. That's a good trade off. You know, that let is. It fly in the kitchen. Well, you know, I have a lot of people. A lot of people in the kitchen over here at the farm hanging out. I make dinner, desserts, we do stuff. And if you, everybody's got to sing for their supper, man. If you didn't cook it, you better do something to, to pay for your dinner. I'm going to put a little more powdered sugar in here. It's really easy. You can't get it wrong. If it ends up being too loose and you want it to be uh, more solid, that you've got too much milk in, then add a little bit of powdered sugar to get it back where you want it. And mix it, and mix it. KitchenAid, I love you. Hand mixers are okay, but stand mixers, powerful. Kitchen tool. If you want to, we can set it. Uh, I believe that Andy in one of his drawers might be able to find you a pot holder right down there by him. It does look really nice. We've got the heat turned off of it. Set it over on the counter, because we're going to serve and make them. I think Andy's almost done with his fries, too. Yeah, the fries are just about ready. He's going to get some of those ooh, nice 
salty right out of the grease fries. Yes. Right on, the counter here. Uh, on the hot pad he was going to give you. Okay. Yeah. I added a little more powdered sugar. Seemed a little loose to me. It's kind of warm in the kitchen too. Sometimes that's a, a factor that you have to look at in the summer when you're making frosting and things. The butter, you want it soft, but it, it gets uh, too loose. Set it in the fridge for a little while if you need to to solid it up. And then we're gonna frost these with a, just a Ziploc bag. We're gonna put, cut a corner, put a tip in it. I really don't frost much stuff with a knife. I'm gonna do it by hand. I find it's really so much easier to put it in a bag, put a pastry tip on the end of it, and you can frost a whole bunch of cookies all at once. You want me to hold that open? No, we're gonna be fine for a minute. Ooh, look at that. That's very good. Andy, how are we doing on the toast and fries? Toast is ready. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I forgot to give that to you. The most traditional way to do these is with ham. Although when you go to restaurants, they generally have, in central Illinois, in the Springfield region, they generally have a ton of different meat choices. Some of them I don't understand why you would want a sandwich. I'm a traditionalist about it, and I want ham. That's how my grandmother always did it. Let me have that plate of toast, if you don't mind. Okay. You want to come help with the sandwiches? Sure. All right. I'm going to do the first one and then you'll know how. Okay. I'll start frosting. Yeah. I think I'm going to do four. Four each? Four pieces of ham on it. Yeah. Okay. Make you a plate. Now, this would technically be a pony shoe, which is what I usually order, a half order. A horseshoe would be two pieces, but that is too much for me to eat. Yeah. So go ahead and we'll plate some of these up. A ladle. Look at that. That is, you did such a nice job with the sauce. And Thank you me. with the fries. Had a little kitchen work done, right? Yes. Yeah? Well, as, <coughs> as I've told you, Jane, unless you uh, can handle working in the kitchen or painting a house, you're not in an actual real band. You have to be able to. There's some supplement. Got to have some yeah, skills. You got to be able to yes. do other things. Yeah, I think so. Accessory well, skill set. Yeah. It's, it's handy that way, you know? Handy. Handy. Speaking of that, Andy, yes. I have a few projects I really need some help with, too. I'd love to help you out with those. And I think there's a lot of things that people uh, would like to learn how to do, and they're overwhelmed by the process, but um, they're not really overwhelming. Well, it's, it's really difficult. It's just knowing what you need to do. You can simplify it and make it really easy. I'm just so glad to hear that, because I've been working on my list. And we'll take some video of Andy doing demonstrating some stuff. We have some neat uh, things, changing out a light switch, which is really easy. Some other things, some of my craft creative projects I do, I need some help. I can't do them all. All right, top them. Now, you're going to take them when they're topped with cheese, Andy, okay. and throw french fries on the top of them. Jane, did you mention why they're called horseshoes? I don't know why, Scotty, yeah. but thank you for asking. I, I don't know why. Myself. I I know that there, there's a little controversy of the origination of them about who the original chef was with the recipe because then it ended up being a dishwasher and you know that came from that restaurant and there's some allegations really yeah yeah it's quite sorted mm -hmm. when you look it up on wikipedia i don't know Anna's my grandma made these um we really started having them later it wasn't a, a young thing had a lot of real traditional comfort food and i make a lot of easy comfort food i think people um, really like that. It makes them think about their childhood, and we all like one of those yummy meals that reminds us of good times when we were a kid. So, and, yeah, and plus, when I used to make this for my daughter when she was younger, I would always make steamed broccoli with it at the same time, because this is pretty much a carbo-loaded meal. But I felt a lot better about it giving her broccoli with it, because the cheese sauce, she'd eat the broccoli, and then I felt a little bit better about it. I think that's pretty standard. Right, for yeah. Children. Yeah, put cheese, cheese, and they'll eat it. cheese sauce they do. And if you're not going to eat all of this when you make it, I mean, there's a lot of things you can use this for. If you're not going to use all the sauce, you can use this to make macaroni and cheese, this nice cheese sure. sauce that you have. Or you can freeze it, and it will be fine, and get it out and make them later. So the cheese sauce will be fine. I do a lot of freezing of things for some of the people here, you know. 
Scotty, I think yeah, that, uh, that's me. Well, and I appreciate I, it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Huh. Okay, we've assembled some of those. Why don't you put that back on the stove for me for a minute, and I'm going to do a, a frosting thing really quick. We made the homemade frosting. Make a cake mix. That's fine. Cake mixes are great. Betty Crocker and Pillsbury, they have it down. But don't buy the can of frosting. I can't read the ingredients on it, and I'm good with big words most of the time, but I think it's hard, and I don't understand why you don't just make it at home out of these simple ingredients that you have. How to make it look nice and fancy when you're going to make some cupcakes is you put it in a bag. Get a pastry tip of some kind. You don't even have to worry about having the right tips. Anybody can do this once you get them started. Put sugar sprinkles on them. Do different fancy wrappers. Everybody loves cupcakes. I do make them pretty thin, like Scott was saying, because then I can put a lot of frosting on them and you kind of have equal bites. And I know a lot of people are really conscious about sweets and how much they're going to eat of certain things. And this is really only three or four bites. Walk around your car, man. Come on. You can't just not have good stuff. It's, it's about how much you have and having control. I think that's a big reason why I like to make cupcakes and cookies when I take places because they're very easy for people to just have a little bit of something nice as a treat and then not be worried about how big and huge it was. Desserts are so big. We, I, I think you quit tasting stuff after like three bites anyway, but then you're just eating it, all the rest of it that's there. And see how fast that was? I just yeah. got them all done really it quick. Yeah, and you can do them with, I have round tip ones, the star tip ones like that. All right, who wants to, who's going to be my guinea pig and try one of these, though, right now? Can I eat one? You can. Are you going to be able to play the guitar and, and go out? Yeah. Yeah, a multitasking musician. Scott will be our sampler. What's the protocol? I'm, well, I'm not going to pick it up. You, no, sure. you're usually going to cut them, and then you want to get like an equal bite of everything in there. That's smoked ham I got from Costco. I, I love Costco. I have a single-sided love affair with them. I know they send me messages in a general way, but they're not personal. <laughs> I love them so much, though. What do you think? Yummy. That cheese Great. sauce is yummy. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll send some of that with you. Okay. Scott's one of my one of my people I feed. Mm. Yeah. Just give me enough feedback. He's a man of few words. Yeah. When I'm eating, especially. Yeah. Well, yum. Pony Good. Shoe. Pony shoe. A pony shoe. A half an order of a pony shoe. So that's one of the things you can use. Fancy bechamel sauce. You can use fancy bechamel sauce. White sauce. Make a cheese sauce out of it. Make a creamy garlic sauce whole bunch of different things that you can do. So uh, horseshoes, today's thing. And making homemade frosting. Don't buy the frosting in a can. Make homemade frosting. It's really worth it. Now another time when you come here at the farm, we wanted to start and be all in the kitchen today because the kitchen is the basis of everything. But in the future, we're going to do some kitchen stuff. I really like part of why I bake these crafts. I make little special ways to give them away. and. Uh, do a lot of different crafting, a lot of things around here, putting in a garden. So you're going to get to see us do a lot of things around here of ways that I nurture and help people. So it's going to be the third Thursday of every month, 2 o'clock. We hope that you will watch us again archived. If you have any questions, send them to me. And we'll see you the third Thursday of June, June 20th. Thanks for watching us today. And the band's going to play a little bit. Thank you, Jane. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, guys.